As my wife always tells me, Tom, it's not about the size, it's what you can do with it. And I don't think that's ever described a phone as perfectly as the new Zenfone 8. And it's kind of like if Asus have made a flagship version of the Pixel 5. Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and Asus have sent me both the Zenfone 8 and also its bigger brother, the Zenfone 8 Flip. Now, to be honest, at the start, I was more excited for the flip because, well, it's got a flipping camera. It is a bit of a chunky monkey, uh, but having all three rear cameras for selfies is awesome. And there's not a hole punch cut out in sight. So we get this lovely full screen experience. So I really do like the flip, uh, but it does only have a 90 hertz screen. And also we haven't had official confirmation of a release uh, or even pricing for this in the UK. But regardless of that, actually having played with these phones for a couple of weeks now, it's actually the standard Zenfone 8 that I'm a lot more excited about. You guys know the drill, normally what happens is we get a big flagship phone like the 8 Flip, the S21 Ultra, iPhone 12 Pro Max or maybe OnePlus 9 Pro and then usually a smaller, cut down, cheaper, non-Pro Ultra Max Flip version. But not this time, this is a 5.9 inch proper flagship phone. Which takes the customization and Game Genie DNA from their ROG gaming phones combines it with the Zenfone design, an almost stock Android Zen UI software, and then it's given the best specs possible. We're talking Snapdragon 888, 120Hz AMOLED screen, up to a whopping 16 gigs of RAM and 256 storage, 5G of course, Gorilla Glass Victus, IP68 stereo speakers, and a few extras you don't normally see, like this high-res 3.5mm headphone jack, a proper notification LED, I haven't seen one of those in ages, and also this nifty customizable power button so you can program what a double tap or a long press does. However, there are a few compromises. For example, there's no microSD card support, so you can't expand the storage. Uh, we don't get any wireless charging, which is a bit disappointing. Uh, there's also no Wi-Fi 6E support, which uh, I would have thought we'd have given the Snapdragon 888 chip. Also, we get Gorilla Glass Victus on the front, uh, but on the back and the camera lens, it's just Gorilla Glass 3. But most significantly, we do only get two camera lenses on the back, uh, which both use last year's Sony sensors. Although the main and ultra-wide lenses double as a macro and telephoto, but this setup doesn't quite compete with the best camera phones out there. By the way, if you do enjoy this video and want to see more from me, perhaps, then a cheeky little subscribe would be lovely. Now, design-wise, it's definitely got a Pixel 4a slash Pixel 5 kind of vibe when you first pick this up, except this has an in-screen fingerprint reader and, well, proper high-end specs. Now, as you can see, it's not as small as the 5.4-inch iPhone 12 mini, but I actually find that to be a little bit too small, and I kind of think the Zenfone's got it just right, the Goldilocks size, if you will. But hilariously, there is also a one-handed mode if you just want to go crazy small. So at this stage, given everything I've told you, how much do you think this is? How much do you think it costs? Well, I can tell you that in the UK, this will start from £539, or 599 euros, in Europe, obviously, uh, and that will get you 6 gigs of RAM and 128 storage. You can pay an extra 60 quid if you want 8 gigs of RAM, but this tops out at £699, so 700 quid basically, uh, which doubles the storage and doubles the RAM up to a frankly ludicrous 16 gigabytes of the stuff, which really does just complete the Napoleon complex that this phone has. And for context, the same spec Zenfone 8 is actually £30 cheaper than the OnePlus 9, and also the cheapest Pixel 5 and also the cheapest iPhone 12 mini uh, cost the same as the most expensive Zenfone 8 at 699. So actually, if you go for the cheapest model of this, which I probably would recommend you do, that's all you need really, then you'll actually save yourself 160 pounds. So in many ways, Asus is becoming the new OnePlus. Flagship specs, slick software, decent, although not best in class cameras, and fantastic value for money. And actually, like OnePlus, another reason I really do like this is the software. We get Android 11 with Asus's Zen UI 8 on top, but it's near enough stock Android so there's no bloatware or heavily customized UI to slow things down. But we do get a few handy extras, including a few features from their ROG gaming phones. 
For example, they've lifted the animation speed settings from the usually hidden developer options. I've put everything to 0.5 times to speed up all the animations. Also, like the ROG Phone 5 I recently reviewed, we have these power options that you can switch between. I tend to just leave it on dynamic and it will automatically go to high performance in games, but if you jump into advanced mode in particular, you can really get under the hood and start tinkering with the settings. And then when you are gaming, the ROG pedigree comes into play with the Game Genie. All this is missing is a couple of shoulder buttons and maybe a fan attachment, and it will be a proper gaming phone. Now I was actually really curious how the battery would hold up because in the big brother, the Zenfone 8 Flip, we have a 5,000 mAh cell versus 4,000 in the Zenfone 8, which obviously isn't as big, but then it's a lot smaller size. So versus the 8 Flip, after an hour of YouTube and half an hour of gaming, the 8 had 72% of its battery left versus 75 on the 8 Flip. Although bear in mind the Flip does have a lower 90Hz refresh, but then again they are both set to automatic modes. So the battery isn't quite as good as the 8 Flip, but it'll still easily get you a full day. And we also get a fast 30 watt hypercharger in the box. It is just a bit of a shame that we don't have wireless charging. However, in what is otherwise a pretty exceptional phone, the cameras are a little bit less impressive. We have a 64 megapixel main lens with OIS, which uses last year's Sony IMX686 sensor, along with a 12 megapixel ultrawide using an IMX363. So we're not getting the latest camera tech, but we do get a two times lossless zoom from the main lens, and also the ultrawide doubles as a pretty decent macro with a four centimeter focal range. Now obviously there's constraints around the size of the phone, so we can't expect a crazy periscope zoom lens or anything, but I think my bigger issue is the processing, particularly with faces. Somehow photos can look both too soft and over sharpened at the same time. Take this regular photo of me for example. My skin has very little texture, yet the fine detail in my hair and my jacket looks a little bit too sharp. And then switching to portrait mode, the lighting changes completely and the colors are quite washed out. But then, in other situations, it does quite well, and actually side by side with the Galaxy S21 Ultra that costs over twice as much, it trades blows. Although, in low light, the Zenfone's dynamic range can't quite keep up with less detail and darker areas and the bright highlights a little bit overexposed, but again, for the price, it's pretty good. We can also shoot in up to 8K at 24 FPS, although genuinely I stick with 4K 30, and it's nice and smooth thanks to OIS. And then up front we have a 16 megapixel selfie, and ASUS claims it's the first phone to use Sony's brand new IMX663 sensor, which also offers much faster dual phase detection autofocus. Which all sounds lovely on paper, but even with the beauty modes turned off, I still think photos look quite artificial. Skin texture is too soft, the colors are a bit washed out, and every shot makes me look even more pale than I actually am. And so on the whole, I'm not super impressed. Although to be fair, I have been testing this with pre-release software, so updates may be able to tweak things a little bit. So great specs and performance, an almost stock Android UI with a few extras, which is nice, and also a really comfortable one-handed design, which you just don't see very often. Plus, it undercuts the competition when it comes to the price. So from just 540 quid, if you can make do with a good rather than great camera, and also don't mind missing out on wireless charging or micro SD card support, then I think the Zenfone 8 is definitely worth a look. And actually it's really good to see some proper flagship competition in a phone this size, so you don't have to just go for a mid-range Pixel or jump ship to uh, an iPhone 12 mini. I do just wish Asus would put a bit more of their efforts into the camera department. But what do you reckon? Do you miss smaller phones? Uh, and would you be tempted to buy the Zenfone 8? Let me know in the comments below. And also uh, drop a link below if you do want to check this out. Thank you so much for watching guys. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ding that bell uh, so you'll be the first to see when I publish a new video. And I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat. Cheers for watching.